I've just spotted something absolutely insane in the credits of Everything Everywhere All at Once that kind of makes me love this movie even more. Just take a look at this. Visual effects, seven people. Now, that's crazy because this movie has over 500 VFX shots. Now, to put this into perspective, let's just compare this against The Lost City, a movie released in the same month with a similar amount of VFX shots, well, less, 426. 125 people. And why not, just for fun, let's compare it against the most recent Marvel movie at the time of making this video, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Yikes, I'm not even going to begin to count how many that is. It just keeps going and going. So how did these seven people take on a whole movie worth of VFX? Well, it's actually quite ingenious, really. Here's how. First, they used clever tricks to speed up the VFX process. One trick was in this sequence where Evelyn jumps through different universes. One of the directors, Daniel Kwan, used a small 4K camera and just shot footage as he walked around different places. This footage was to be used as the background image. However, in order for it to look like Evelyn was actually travelling through each of these places, different lighting would have to reflect on her as she went through each one. So, in order to achieve this quickly and cheaply, they used a technique similar to Industrial Light & Magic's stagecraft that was used on series such as The Mandalorian. But instead of using the massively expensive high-def LED screen walls that Industrial Light & Magic do, they just used two cheap LED panels, as you can see here. The pixels are massive. But still, it was good enough to create the correct colour reflections on her face so that she would sit well on the background images. Another trick was for the rock scene, where they used sticks, pulleys and strings to push and pull the rocks through the gravel and sand. But cutting those things out of the shot was a difficult and time-consuming process. So in order to make it quicker and easier, they used an AI rotoscoping tool, or an AI cutting out tool, from Runway called Green Screen. With this tool, instead of taking half a day to complete the process, they could cut the characters out and place them cleanly in the shot in just minutes. Another trick was in the Rakakuni scene. Here, the hibachi chef has to juggle with vegetables, but to speed things up and therefore save both time and money, instead of going full CG in 3D modelling, they used a paintbrush inside After Effects to draw the vegetables and then animate them. Secondly, they tried to avoid using VFX as much as possible, so whenever they could do something using practical effects or done for real, they did. For example, the hands in the hot dog universe were actually gloves made from moulds of the actors' hands. But before the moulds set, Jason Hammer and his team replaced their fingers with real hot dog wieners. For the Rakakuni universe, Jason Hammer made an animatronic raccoon. The brief he was given was to make it look like bad taxidermy, and so he did by using a real taxidermy raccoon as a skeleton for both the internal machinery and the external prosthetics, and then painting on the fur to give it the cheap, quick and dirty look. For the Pinky of Fury scene, they made a mechanical hand so that they could flex the pinky finger inside this. There was an airline that ran a little balloon that could be inflated to simulate the muscle bulge. And in the scene where Evelyn fights Deirdre, you notice here that the door closes away from the camera. However, this would have meant that later on in the scene, here, Deirdre wouldn't have been able to pull the door open. You can actually see the hinges and strike plate are on the wrong side here. So they built a styrofoam door to mimic the real door, and then had crew members pull it off shot from this side. And other crew members dumped dust and debris on Deirdre from this side, making it all look like Deirdre had somehow ripped the door right off its hinges. This is... It's short round. Anyway, lastly, and perhaps most importantly, they overcame all their technological and financial shortcomings with flexibility and ingenuity. As we said before, everything, everywhere, all at once only had seven VFX artists. Five of these artists were self-taught, having learnt from Video Copilot and YouTube videos, and they alone completed 90% of the VFX shots. Two of those five artists, Matt Wokenham and Jess Deesom, completed their shots using old 2017 MacBook Pros. Matt even found that he couldn't use his auxiliary monitor when rendering because it slowed down his render times. Cutting down on the render time required by more elaborate effects was key to getting the work done on time and on budget. And they did this by, once again, getting creative. The first time you see the bagel come in through the curtain, in this scene, you'd think that the entire environment was CG. 
But it wasn't. They actually just had one render of the bagel, with the lighting the way they wanted it to be. Then everything else was done in 2D and After Effects. So it was just all composite. They treated it as though they were actually lighting it on set, except they were doing it as a 2D thing that they could have immediate feedback on. Another clever solution they came up with was how to clearly define each universe in order to stop the viewer from getting confused. To achieve this, they gave each universe its own visual language, and they did this by using colour palettes, lens choices, and aspect ratios. When in the normal verse, they used a Zeiss super speed lens at a 185 to 1 aspect ratio. However, should they move into an action sequence, they would change to a Hawk anamorphic lens and a wider 239 to 1 aspect ratio. Flashback scenes were in the 4 to 3 to give the feel of old VHS camera footage. The movie universe used a Canon K35 lens and a green colour palette, paying homage to Wong Kar Wai's film In the Mood for Love. The Hot Dog Finger universe used a Baltar lens and brown and yellow colour palette, referencing Todd Haynes' 2015 film, Carol. The Rakakuni universe not only paid homage to Pixar's 2007 film, Ratatouille, but its colour palette mimicked that of Paul Thomas Anderson's 2002 film, Punch Drunk Love. By combining all of these factors, an original script, creative narrative, passionate cast members, resolutive filmmakers, a wide range of aspect ratios, multiple film genre references, clever practical effects, effective digital effects, intelligent editing, puppets, animatronics, stunts and gags. Not only did they manage to make a great movie on a relatively small budget, but they also managed to make it live up to its title. Because it really did have everything, everywhere, all at once. Support Mr. Green by sending us a super thanks. Just click on the thanks button under the video and choose an amount to donate. This will ensure Mr. Green gets a new banana. He will be happy. Also, we really appreciate every last one of you guys, so stay safe and thanks for watching our video.